Hey everyone, welcome to Flying Wheels and my Flying Wheels YouTube channel. Today is a really, really cool video because I'm putting a lot of the myths and legends about electric vehicles to the test and to an end. So I am in an all-electric cannonball run race from New York to LA. We're actually in Flagstaff, Arizona today. You'll see a Volkswagen ID4. Behind me right there is an Audi e-tron. There's a Porsche Taycan. There's a Mustang Mach-E and then my Taycan way in the back. So a week ago, I knew nothing about electric vehicles. And to be honest with you, I probably thought, the same as a lot of you guys. There's a lot of things we don't like about electric vehicles, but it's the future. So whether you like them or not, this video is gonna explain how it works, but to like the in layman's terms, like to me a week ago that knows nothing about EV. So that's really cool. So we're gonna learn about the battery, like how long does it last? We're gonna learn about recycling the battery and what does it do to the earth? And then how do you actually even charge these cars like from home and how do you get across the country in them at the local charging stations? How much does it cost? There are so many questions that I had no idea a week ago going into this. So you're gonna basically learn EV 101, the basics of owning an electric vehicle and what the future is gonna look like. Now it's not just me talking because I'm not the expert here. I have two really experienced people, Miss Go Electric and Ryan at the Kilowatt. He just actually won the world record for the fastest race from New York Tele in a Tesla. This is a really, really cool video, whether you like EV or not, and I'd love to hear your opinions at the end. So let's get started. point of what I'm doing right here is to maybe talk about some of the myths. You seem to know far more about the EV world than I do, so it's I, I'd much prefer have a professional speak about what myself and all of you guys are wondering than me just guess what's happening through my experience. Sure. So right here, this is Ryan Levinson. Is it at the kilowatts or from the kilowatts? Either one. Just so you know, we're charging across America. We're racing across America in an EV. What do you think the first thing everybody has said is? It's already been done. Some guy already did it, and he did it in a Tesla. Oh. This is that guy. Yeah. This is the guy that just did that. So what we're discussing right now are a, a, a few questions I have. So you've already raced across America in Teslas. Yeah. We're not doing Several Teslas. Times. So there's a specific reason why we're not doing Teslas in this race. First of all, we're able to use different vehicles, different manufacturers, all on CCS. So they've just got you know, one plug across multiple manufacturers versus Tesla. The only one that can plug in here in the US to Tesla ports are Teslas. So this is an Electrify America machine. This is what we've been using across the country for the majority of our trip. What is that thing right there? So this is a CCS plug. It's a bit larger than the Tesla plug. It's got a nice thick cable. That's gonna be your highest power charge for any of these vehicles. It's gonna come from this. Now you'll see 150. 150 now my porsche is charging right now on a 350. ryan going back to that 150 can you please explain the difference what am i looking at because i had no idea when i bought this yeah. car so one way to describe it like the 150 versus 350 is like how big is that pipe you're almost wondering how quick can you get electrons through like a pipe almost like a fluid and so 350 or 150 that's just basically how wide the pipe is and now your car might not be able to take all that power all at once so it'll derate to whatever your car can take that's the maximum peak charging that you'll get from one of these. So a great way to think about charging is like a glass of water or like you're pulling from a gallon. You often start just a little bit slow, you ramp up, and as it fills up, you slow down as it gets close to full. So now I've got this take on. I love reading these comments because most of the viewers are the same as me. Like we read the range. Oh, the range sucks on the take on. There's so many benefits to the take on. The range might suck, which hasn't really sucked me that much, yeah. but the charging rate is what people aren't discussing. You can actually receive a peak of 350 kilowatts. I can't even get close to that. I can get a peak of 150. My car, it'll peak at 150 right about until about 7%. Then it'll drop to about 110. And then it'll drop to 75 up until it's 80%. And then it's like 11 kilowatts. I mean, it's, again, it's just like reducing that flow of, of a power in or of, of like water in. Whereas you get it up to 350, you'll be able to charge much faster, get 200 miles way before I can even hit 100. The range on your Mach-E is what? Uh, the overall range is 270, but with that 80% fast charging limit, for the most part, we're acting like as a 200 mile range. So this is your personal Mach-E for this race, right? Yes, yes sir. All right, so it's sponsored by the Kilowatts and Miss Go Electric. The Kilowatts is you, Miss Go Electric is your racing partner. Yes. Are there yeah. different versions of the Mach-E? Different ranges, different versions, all wheel drive, rear wheel drive. You can get a long range pack or short range pack. You can also get the new GT or GT Performance. So they made it a pretty sporty EV here. Uh, I know it's an SUV. I know it doesn't seem that way, especially with these thinner tires. This specific one is kind of more their long range efficiency model, but 
they do make the GT and GT Performance, and those are actual beasts. Zero to 60 in as little as 3.5. So here's the interior of your Mach-E, five passenger. We are on day eight right now. Yeah. How about comfort? The seats have been comfortable. Our videographer's been saying this is his favorite car because in the back, there's just like, you know, much more comfort. We're sitting more vertical than the Taycan, but yeah, it's a great space. Explain your auto drive. So you were telling me about your thumb the other night. When I'm driving, I've been using the adaptive cruise control and lane keep, and it does a good job to keep me centered. I'm not bouncing around. So I've just been keeping my finger just right there, just giving it a little bit of rotational torque. It's just looking to see that I'm here by, it's tracking my eyes a little bit, but mostly right now, at least the system is just looking for me to turn the wheel just a little bit. I love this giant tablet versus mine. I have three different screens. It gets kind of confusing. I love that. It looks so easy to use. It, it is relatively easy to use. We've been using Apple CarPlay through it. Yeah, this little knob is my favorite part. <laughs> I think it's hilarious that they put just a volume knob there. That's actually what I don't like about my take on. There's no knob. I, I have <laughs> to physically knob. tap everything, like to lower and increase the volume. I have to push the buttons up and down. Let's talk about Tesla's real quick. Yeah. So perfect example of the CCS port. Uh, we showed you how the rapid charger works. Well, now we're at a hotel. Lots of hotels actually have like your standard overnight chargers. You'll see the difference. We don't have the two prongs on the bottom. That's your slower charger. So this is a J1772. Now this is something you leave in your car plugged in all night if you're at a hotel yep. or even like at your home that's probably like your standard charger that you'd have at your house that would take four or so hours to charge up it gets a little bit better there are far more tesla charging stations than all the universal charging stations that we found we're at the same hotel that has a tesla charge plug look at how much smaller that plug is than our other charger and it's the same charger for the high and low power charging really puts yep. out the so it's the same shape same hole I have two charge ports in my car, one on one side, one on the other. Yep. Tesla have one or two? Just the one. All right. One does everything. Now, we went out uh, in Colorado Springs the other night. We got to the parking garage. You just plugged yeah. your cord in and walked away, and that was it. The car and the, the charger communicate, and it charges your credit card directly. Unlike just, what we're experiencing. It just seems so much more efficient. We go to a charge point, you have to swipe your car, there's several different apps, Tesla. One app, it's all standard, it's like- The car tells you where it is. It is your iPhone of cars, mm -hmm. right, yeah. essentially. What are you getting for range on the Tesla versus what are you getting for range in the Mach-E? Well, they're about the same. Uh, the Tesla will go about 300, 305, and you can get a version of the Mach-E that goes about 305 as well. I noticed coming from New Hampshire to New York, rest areas have charging stations for Tesla. So just like you'd go get gas, that same gas station has Tesla chargers. Doesn't have the Electrify America some is prominent. Do, some don't. The way I talk about it is like basically Tesla got the A1, uh, you know, the primo spots. Electrify America came second. Let's go check on the inside. Before I even begin, these doors, what happens in cold, frozen weather? Well, I mean, you just you tap it, you hit it, you push it. You just keep doing it until yeah, it eventually it opens. Yeah, push so it, it pushes like that, pull the handle. Wow, that opened up easily. Yep. Getting in it the other day, this is the first time I was ever in a Tesla. The leather was supple. Yeah. So this leather was extremely soft getting in this car. How do you compare it? I mean, it's similar looking to your Mach-E, but more futuristic. It's funny because yeah, in a lot of ways it's similar. This is a horizontal screen instead of the vertical screen. There's no physical knobs, so they can reconfigure everything here. But like, there's like much less buttons even still. Like your glove box is in the tablet. Your glove screen. box button is in your tablet. Mm -hmm. First thing I noticed right off the bat, you have no instrument cluster. No instrument cluster, that's gone. It's just right here. All your speed information stays right there. This is a legit tablet. Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, yeah. everything is right there. So your whole interface is right there. Yep. So Ryan Levinson, you live in uh, LA? San right? Francisco. You live in San Francisco. So California, huge EV world out in California. I'm from New Hampshire, which like has the, the infrastructure is horrendous out there. Everything's yeah. 45 minutes in any of the directions. Can you tell me about the infrastructure Tesla versus like your universal charge points? Yeah. Well, Tesla, at least in San Francisco or the Bay Area, has chargers every like 15 miles. It's, it's everywhere. Why do you think Tesla is so much farther advanced than ChargePoint or Electrify America or any other brand out there? They have to. It required, for Tesla to be successful, their only EV, they had to do the infrastructure, they had to do full electric cars, they had to make them great. These other places and these other players, they don't have to. Tell me if I'm right or wrong. I'd like to blame government versus private business. So yeah. Tesla, they need to make a profit. They need to make money. Their job is to make a product that works and makes that money. people love. Our government, everybody needs a little say. So it's gotta be done this way. Well, wait, we also want this. Am, am I right in saying that? I think so. Electrify America, you know, when you plug your Ford in, you talk to the Electrify America network, that talks to the Signet charger, Signet talks to the Windows operating system. There's just too many players. With Tesla, Tesla talks, talks to Tesla. Tesla talks That's to Tesla. That's awesome. So we're with Miss Go Electric, and I have a bunch of questions that I wanna ask you. 
Obviously, you know far more than I do about this entire industry. You work directly with a lot of the corporations that handle this stuff. So, great person to speak with. Misco Electric, I have a few questions. Number one, a lot of videos coming up according to this race will have a large manufacturer or, or however you call it, charging stations. They have an infrastructure across the country called Electrify America. These are the big stations that we've been using that we've been finding from New York all the way out to LA. Now, the reason there are Electrify America stations everywhere, I'm just finding out, is for one very specific reason. Can you elaborate on that? That's right. Actually, so when a few years back, Volkswagen got caught with the Dieselgate scandal, they were actually forced to invest a bunch of money into a charging infrastructure network. So that's why we see a whole span of network across the country now because Electrify America was created and is now owned by Volkswagen in order to kind of compensate for that. So they were forced to do that, but they're really inconsistent. What I mean by inconsistent, and as you watch this series farther, you'll see that some stations I'll show up to put out 34 kilowatts, which is really, really low. I mean, my car can take up to 350 kilowatts. You don't know what you're going to get. Can you elaborate on that, please? The thing is that they expanded so fast and tried to put this infrastructure in so fast that you know the reliability is a little bit of a hiccup so a perfect example of what i was just talking about with the tesla versus like the universal infrastructure the tesla you plug it in and go that's what this is brad you write for jalopnik i do you also drive the other porsche taycan in this race yes now you had just said it and that's why i turned the camera on <laughs> The Tesla versus the other stations. Yeah. I, you, I pulled out of my station. Yeah. When I was videoing this footage earlier. Yes. You pulled in right after me and pulled a different charge than I. Pulled. Yes. And then, would you mind elaborating on what you just said, if you can remember? Um. It? Yeah. So basically, like with a Tesla, when you when you pull in, you plug in and it's like immediately charging. With Electrify America, sometimes it takes three or four minutes for it to like boot up and connect and like all that stuff. And of course, the ability for it to be reliable from charger to charger like if you're getting if you're pulling good speeds i'd almost rather stay at that charger yeah than hop to another yeah, one you're absolutely right so i was i was getting like i think i saw 174 today okay and then right after i left what did you pull on the same machine we got around 250 but it did throttle almost like immediately like within just, a couple of minutes it's, it just tanked this is nerd talk yeah, yeah right now for sure but all that means is you're getting far more power from the yeah. same machine than yeah. i was getting in the same it's just yeah. a weird thing and it's like a a, a lottery like a luck yeah. of the draw yeah that's all it is yeah there are a lot of misconceptions in the EV world, especially from the uneducated EV owner. I mean, I hear everything. And if you read the comments section, it's, yeah, that, that Electrify America station is charged by the diesel generator behind the wall over there. What I'd really like to ask you about is where's the power coming from and stored to charge these stations to charge my car? Where's the power come from? Yeah, so, I mean, some manufacturers for the networks Either they have a energy storage solution that is kind of like the bank where they can draw immediately energy from that system in order to compensate and make sure everyone has uh, the ability to charge. Now, just on the other side of the parking lot, this like barracks set up right here, this is actually where the facility is that charges this, these stations. Now I climbed the fence so I can show you what it looks like inside. No diesel generators, no coal generators. It's just machines sending power to the station. But in some cases, they're tapped directly into utility lines, depending on which location you're okay. at. Okay, I think the real question is, is it running off coal or diesel generators, or is it solar, or is it uh, nuclear? What is the power source originally coming from? It is essentially based on what the local supply is. And if they have to, the energy companies and utilities have to buy off of different areas, it could potentially be coal or something that's a little bit less clean mm -hmm. so uh, it also depends on what time of day because a lot of times we see later at night those peak levels drop and they can pull uh, from directly from the utility instead right. of them having to bounce out to a separate regional something that's important to remember is that over 90 percent of people their daily commute is within 30 miles so they're not going to really necessarily be doing what we're they're doing. not doing what we're doing yeah. and what we're doing is impractical because typically every night we would be charging at probably a hotel and right. getting your charge while right. you're sleeping. And we're actually, rules go against that. So we're charging on the clock. So we are probably at the most disadvantage of anyone that could be driving across the country in an electric vehicle. Go to your yeah. hotel, charge it up overnight, you're at 100% every morning. We can't do that. So big question for the people that, like like myself, going into this, I had no idea what happens to the batteries, what, like, what's the life of the battery, and then what happens? Because as far as I know, 
like 10, 15 years, you need a new battery, it's gonna cost you a ton of money, and these things can't be recycled. Can you put like an end to these myths or tell me what's actually yeah. on? So first of all, they last for like hundreds of thousands of miles. And once they're at that point, you're still getting like 60, 70, maybe even 80% of the actual battery life from it. So a lot of companies are actually repurposing those batteries for home storage. Basically taking solar energy or even grid energy at like less than peak time and reusing it to power a house like for a blackout. So they're still useful. Save on fuel, yeah. Another one of my questions is like, obviously we charge the majority of the time at home. Yes. We've been charging on the road this whole trip, but typically if you're an EV owner, you just charge it at home. Can you explain like charging costs, when's the best time to charge, how long does it actually take, and what do you think it should actually cost you on your home electric bill? People who do charge at home, you definitely would wanna look into your electric bill. There are a couple different line items that you would need to add up to configure the exact amount of how much it's gonna cost per kilowatt hour. So for example, I have a 90 kilowatt hour battery at my house, and the national average is 13 cents per kilowatt hour. And that's actually what I get uh, right around there at my house. So to fill up my about 300 mile EV, it's just under $10. So I bought this Porsche Taycan specifically for this race. Now we had just talked about how most of the time you're charging your vehicle at home. So like a regular uh, dryer outlet, a 220 outlet is what you would charge your car off of. I had to wire my house in my garage to a 220. You have an electrician do it, it's easy. You come home, you plug your car in. I mean, if you're, I get 220 miles of range. So when I was home using this car, once a week, you charge it up overnight, you're at 100%. Let me show you how the cables work. So my car came with this setup right here. Now this bag has everything I need to charge my car from home. You'll see this is the power port that essentially plugs right into the 220 outlet at my house and it hangs on the wall. Now I have a four prong 220 plug here, but I also have an adapter here for a 110. Now this is like a trickle charger in an emergency if you're somewhere where you really need a charge to help get your battery life up to get to a charging station. You'll see here, I have the slow charger. So something like this will typically take four to eight hours to get me to 100% charge. Now this right here is your slow charging charger. We are at the hotel, but it's essentially what you would have at home. Exactly what I just showed you in my trunk is kind of what this is, wired up to power. Now it's the same power you're drawing at like a campsite when you park your camper in. This right here is your slow charger. So anybody coming for the hotel for the night can just plug their car and leave it overnight, charge up. Now what I'm finding is selfish chargers, meaning people are inconsiderate. I've gone to charging stations at the airport this week that according to my strategy would have worked and helped me win the race, but people were just inconsiderate. They'll park their car there and not even charge because it's kind of like a handicap pass. You can't park in the EV spots if you don't have an EV. So they're almost using these spots like an entitlement. Just because they have an EV car, they can park an EV spot. That's not how it is. It's really inconsiderate. We went to the airport to charge. We came in that day. Let's just tell you that because there were people just parked in the parking spaces, not charging their cars. Mostly Tesla people. So that's frustrating. Now the cool thing too, just like the airport, these are free. So you just plug it in, you'll see there's no place to swipe your credit card. So you just plug it into your car and you're good. So thank you so much for like answering all of my questions, all the things that I have no idea how to answer these questions. You guys kind of put an end to all these myths and legends about EV vehicles. Hopefully you guys gained a lot of knowledge uh, from it as well. How can we find you guys? Mine is any social channel at Miss Go Electric. If you search the kilowatts or K-L-W-T-T-S, you'll find me where I'm at. And you were just on something special, weren't Vin you? Vin Wiki for that Campbell record. He had a whole story on Vin Wiki, so you can go check that one out too. Again, I have learned so much this week, and a week ago, I was anti-EV. I mean, I just bought a brand new CA Corvette. My regular daily driver is a Duramax diesel pickup. I mean, my carbon footprint is huge on this planet, and that car has really changed my mind in the EV world and what our future has in store. So hopefully this video was helpful to you. You learned basically the basics of owning an electric vehicle and how it all works. If this was helpful, make sure to subscribe and give me a thumbs up. The other thing too, tell me what you think. Are you sold on them yet? Are you not sold on them yet? What's your opinions? I'd love to hear them in the comments section. I'll see you all later. Have a great day. Bye.